the Temple Customs, and in this episode, we're going to go through uh, the cost of a free four-inch lift. For those of you who remember, a few episodes back, I got new axles for Ruby. Uh, the one of the main reasons was is I went away from the Quadra Track uh, transfer case, and in doing so, it was going to change the position of the rear pumpkin on the AMC 20 in the back of Ruby. Now, I could have just gotten narrow track, because they make them narrow track set up for that, but I figured if I was doing it, I might as well go wide track, which widens the overall width of the axles three inches front and rear. And uh, I found someone who had them, so I purchased those new wide track axles. Um, they're the same AMC 20 and Dana 30. They're the same exact axles, but they're just three inches wider. And in the rear, it moves the pumpkin to the middle. Along with that, when I went to go look at them, he gave me a price for the axles, and there was already leaf springs on the axles that I was looking at. And he gave me for another $100, I could just have those leaf springs. Now, Ruby needed new leaf springs. Her front leaf springs were pretty much flattened out, and the steering, uh, I think the, the, called the drag link on that one, was almost dragging on the leaf spring. And I was actually concerned that if I didn't do something by get, at least getting replacement stock height springs that I would hook uh, the, the tie rod end on the spring and not be able to turn back. And that would, that would be bad. So he offered me for another, for another $100 to get the springs that were already on it. Now, the whole setup for both axles ended up costing me $400. So normally in the market we're in right now, it would have been closer to $1,000, at least in my area, for front and rear wide tracks for this vehicle, for, for, for Ruby. Uh, so when you look at it that way, I got a really good price on the axles and I got leaf springs, a four inch leaf, leaf springs. And these are BDS leaf springs, which in the market of four inch lift leaf springs, um, are going to give you, from what I'm told, a better, softer ride. Um, a lot of times when you go to a four-inch lift on the CJ7s, it's like riding in a tank. Um, it, it's, it's solid. There's, there's no give. Uh, these seem to are already give me a little bit of give, so um, that, that was kind of a nice thing to get these, these, these softer riding four-inch lift springs. Um, but why I put the quotation marks in free isn't always free. So let me go through what it has cost me to put these four inch lift leaf springs on. On this table here, I have the majority of what it has cost me to um, go to the four inch lift. So uh, first off, when I, when I purchased it, the, to get these springs off of the other Jeep, the previous owner just cut all of the uh, bolts. Not uncommon, I did do the same thing on Ruby, and again, that incurs a cost. So first off, when I got the springs, there were like half of the spring bushings that were needed. So um, I went to BDS, and I ordered up front and rear kits for uh, both, for, for all the springs. So I had brand new spring bushings on there. Um, those cost me, um, those cost me $20 a set, so a total of $40 in, uh, spring bushings, which wasn't, isn't that awful. Um, the next thing was, once I had those in and I had to put the springs back in, luckily I was able to save my U-bolts, they weren't that bad, I was able to, uh, get the, um, nuts off and reuse U-bolts, I had to cut one, but between the two sets of axles, plenty of good good U-bolts, so that didn't cost me anything. But putting them in to get Ruby's old axles out, I had to cut shackles and cut the main bolts to get her springs out. Um, I tried to salvage them. It took me two hours to remove one, and I damaged it anyway, so I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. And I ended up cutting out everything else. Cut the bolts, cut the shackles, whatever it took, 
ripped out the uh, the bushings, whatever it took to get them out, I did. So just to get springs back in, as they were sitting, was um, it cost me for the front shackles because they are slightly different. The bushings are number different. The front shackles cost me twenty eight dollars, and the rear shackles cost me twenty six dollars. And again, they're the they're stock height shackles. I didn't go any lift uh, shackle. They're a stock height, the cheapest shackle on the market. And again, these will probably be changed later uh, when I do Ruby's complete rebuild. But just to get it on the road, I went with the cheapest shackle available. I know they're cheap, but they'll do the job for what I need them to do for now. Um, the other thing was is the the bolts that go through the eyelets on the non-movable part of the leaf spring. Because you have the, the shackle part that swings the rear leaf spring, but you have the, the part of the leaf spring that bolts solid. Um, I had to get new 916 bolts, and they're five inches long. You can get away with four and a half, but my uh, lows didn't have those. So 916 by five inch bolts, they're like 450 a piece. I needed four of them. So uh, with that and the nuts and the washers, all of that hardware added up to about $30 in, in just miscellaneous hardware to put the springs in. So that just gets me the Jeep sitting on axles on springs. That's it. So now not so bad, but here comes all the added incurred stuff. Once you've moved the axles away from the frame, you need new brake lines, three brake lines. You need the two flex lines out to the front wheels and the one that comes from the frame down to the axle, the rear axle to run out where it runs hard lines again. The brake line kit was $76. Uh, there were slightly cheaper ones, but they were all about this price range. These are braided stainless. It, 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 the cost difference from going braided stainless to going um, rubber wasn't that extravagant that it wasn't you know, worth doing these. And these will be reusable when I redo Ruby. These won't have to be changed out anyway. Um, adjusting the steering, you have to get a pitman arm. So I had to get a pitman arm, and the pitman arm is going to now allow me to get me in movement and get the steering um, drag link in line with the right movement. Uh, pitman arms are going to run you about 50 bucks, 50, 55 bucks. Again, cheapest I found. There's other ones that are way more expensive. This one, about 55 dollars. Sway bar links. Uh, these are now again. You've moved the axle further down. You need new sway bar links. Um, these ran about $31 for the pair. Again, cheapies, about $31. You can get the disconnecting link ones, which I'll probably put on um, Rusty when he's done, but for Ruby to get her on the road, cheapy ones. And this doesn't even cost what it's gonna cost me if I wanna replace the actual rubber ones that are on the frame. Uh, they're, they're pretty well beat, but those wouldn't incur the cost of the lift, so I didn't add that in. Um, so $31 on uh, Extended sway bar links. Something else that has to happen is because you are moving the uh, rear differential housing down to make your drive shaft angle work better so you're not getting as much of a bind, you need to drop your skid plate. Now, this is the drops on for a kit that I bought when I bought, uh, when I bought Rusty's uh, four inch lift. This came with his kit. Actually, a lot of these parts came with his kit that I'm just gonna steal and put on there, and I'll buy new stuff for, for Rusty. Um, these are for a YJ. These actually do not work for a CJ frame, um, so that's why I didn't use them. But what I did use, I went online. This is a one and a half inch thick drop. I bought um, super thick wall aluminum tubing. I added a 3 8 three eighths inch hole in them. They are one and a half inches. And I use that as my spacers. Um, I kind of like that better just because I've, I feel you're going to get crud stuck between all of this material and you're going to end up rotting your frame out faster. So by just having the aluminum tubing, there's a lot less chance of getting so much stuff caught in there and, uh, and, and holding foreign material. 
so for my purposes i don't know what these cost but what the kit that i bought on amazon the, the tubing i bought on amazon already pre-cut to length uh was twenty dollars and so that gave me all of the drop pieces i needed for uh to drop the skid plate down um for that part um the last one of the last parts is shocks you've also again moved it away so you need new shocks so i went and i went to rock auto and again, got the cheapest shocks possible. To me, I don't need to have super expensive shocks. I'm not going crazy off-roading. You know, it'll be mild, mild uh, trail riding, if anything. Uh, these are Gabriel shocks. They are they are a brand name shock. Uh, these are the cheapest shocks. All four of these shocks ran me $115 shipped from Rock Auto. Um, now the downside of these, these do not have a boot on them of any sort. So the shaft is uh, exposed. Some guys say that's better. Some people like to have them covered. I personally like to have them covered. I just allow more drainage around them to allow crud to get out. And, and if you take the time every once in a while to clean them, they're, you're not gonna uh, collect a ton of crud um, inside this area. So I went online, Amazon again, and I picked up just black shock boots. Um, these are kind of nice because they had multiple colors, so you can kind of match them to what you want to do. I figured I'd just go black on Ruby. Uh, I could have gone red, but that's like too much red. So I just went with black basic shock boots. I think I actually think the black ones were a couple dollars cheaper than the other colors. And these shock boots only really cost me, I think, $7 for the pair. So a total of $15 on Amazon to get shock boots that'll make these shocks, will dress these shocks up just slightly a little bit better. So that is all of the individual pieces parts, bare minimum, that I needed to do to um, get this free 4 inch lift to be a functional, um, a functional product on here. So all in all, all these little bits, bits and pieces have uh, run me $430. So. Free became $430. Now, that does not add on top the big cost. There's one big cost in here that I haven't added in, um, and it's going to hurt a little bit. But it's going. It 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 needed to be done. Um, I was going to have to buy a new drive shaft no matter what because when I changed out from the Quadra Track um, differential and put this uh, center section or this center. Uh, pumpkin AMC 20 in, I was going to need a new drive shaft. Um, but the lift made it that a factory drive shaft would no longer fit. So the best I have found, and I have been searching and looking, and when I say best, best price and one of the best companies I've heard, Tom Woods Drive Shafts is where I'm probably going to go with does a double Carden drive shaft, which means it has double U-joints at the transfer case side. And that means that your drive shaft angle does not have to be as perfect and parallel as it would be if it was not a double Carden drive shaft. They will do me a custom length. I, you take a measurement, you send them the measurement on their website. It's really easy to do. They will send you that with an extended slip joint if you want it. I don't know if I'm going to get the extended slip joint on this. I don't think I need the extended slip joint. Um, but that whole drive shaft shipped to me, because it's free shipping, is like $390. And I thought that was a fantastic price because I've seen other companies do them with, non, with a non-double card end joint for close to $600. Uh, so that's what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to end up uh, ordering that probably in the next week or so. Um, that's really the only thing stopping me from driving Ruby, because uh, I have all the other parts here to finish it up. The last thing is to connect my transfer case to my uh, drive shaft. So with that added in, you're looking at a total of $830 to put a 4-inch spring lift, free 4-inch spring lift on Ruby. Kind of pricey, but it, there's, there's always an added cost to 
when you want to change something up like this. I kind of pieced it together. You can buy the um, you can buy a full kit from like Rough Country or Rancho, um, but their full kits aren't free. So if you if you're planning to go four inch lift, there's still going to be an incurred cost. A new four inch lift kit from like Rough Country will run you anywhere between six and seven hundred dollars. That comes with new springs, new U bolts, shocks. The drop pitman arm, and I do believe even some of them come with the spacers to lower the skid plate. Um, but that does not give you the drive shaft that you would have to most likely purchase anyway. So between that cost and the cost of how I did it, piecing it together, I am about $200 cheaper than buying the new kit. And that doesn't give you the extended sway bar links either. So... How I look at when I've been doing Ruby and I've been doing Rusty, $200 for a brand new kit, which is brand new springs, isn't a huge difference. But when I look at it over time with, I save $200 here, I save $100 here, I save $50 here. To me, that's an important savings because that all adds up to, you know, when you're doing a project like this, it adds up to huge savings. Um, it all depends on the individual if knowing that you have new springs with no rust on them is worth it to you or if you don't care that yeah these maybe have a thousand miles on them two thousand miles on them um, and they're rusty that may not be what you're looking for so I hope this helps people out to know number one when you're looking at a lift kit what might not come with your kit, what you're going to need, and uh, what kind of cost is going to be if you do have to piece a the accessories to a lift kit. Thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope everybody has a great week.